Now then guys, how you doing? Welcome back to another rebuild. Today we take on Panathinaikos. Now this one was suggested in my comments and we're going to give it a go. It's actually I thought Panathinaikos were quite a dominant team, but the Greek league is basically run by Olympiakos. It completely is, you know. I think Panathinaikos have won it twice in the last 20 years, so not too great for them. And obviously, Greek football has its controversy. There was the owner of Poak Salinica that Walked onto the pitch with a gun at one point, I'm sure. I remember reading about that. So, yes, he's had his controversy. What I will say, apologies, early doors. Let's get my excuses in. Is the pronunciations on this video, I'm sure, are going to be absolutely horrific. So, please don't hate on us. I'll do my best. You know, I'm probably going to end up giving half of these players nicknames because I'm just not going to be able to do it. But yes, I'm really looking forward to this one as I just want to overturn that dominance of Olympiakos. And Panathinaikos, I need them to become the superpower within Greece. So if you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. So turn the bell on as well, you know, don't miss any notifications. These videos should be dropping every Saturday, Sunday. It's usually a Sunday. Absolutely loving the rebuilds. My most popular kind of video on the channel anyway. So yes, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And let's get in to rebuilds and Panathinaikos. So here we go then guys, day one in the Greek Super League. As like I say, Panathinaikos here. Currently, let's have a look at the overview. Had a shocking season last season with a fifth place finish. The season before that, they got fourth place. They've actually been on the rise the two seasons before that though. An 11th and an 8th place finish. But like I say, they haven't won the Greek Super League since 2009-10. And then they won it before that, back in 2003-2004. So yeah, it's not been great for them. They've come in the top two places quite a few times, but then they have started to drop off a bit. When we look at them in the Greek Cup, the last one that in 2014, and the Greek Super Cup in 1994, so yeah, they're on a little bit of a balance spell, should we say. When we look then, let's have a look at the Greek Super League, and look at the past winners, been absolutely dominated by Olympiakos, Payak on there, and AK, but yeah, we haven't even been in the top three over the last four seasons, and that is disappointing. Panathinaikos, like I say, I thought they were a massive club, this probably are a massive club, but you know what I mean, they're a massive club as in there, we're constantly picking up silverware, but that is not the case. So when we're looking at the club info then we can see down here the rivalries So we've got the classic Greek derby against Olympiakos and we've got the Athens derby against AEK That is it, other rivalries is Payak but that's a competitive rivalry just because they're a team that are performing So yes, obviously I want to keep away from I would imagine Olympiakos and AEK players That upsets some of the viewers when I buy rival players I do it just so I weaken their side Naturally I'm going to try and take their best players off them but as it stands, they're the two teams that I've got to stay away from. What about the club vision then? So club vision wise, what is the expectation? Club culture is to play possession football. That surprises me. Most teams want entertaining attack and football. We're going to go for a possession based football. Five year plans to work within the wage budget. The end of the current season is a top half finish in the Super League. The Greek Cup to reach the semi-final as a bare minimum and to work towards becoming the most reputable team in Greece. Develop the best youth system in the country as well. And basically just want us to maintain a top half finish in the league. So there's no real ambition here at the minute for us to get a top place finish so the pressure might be off for us to may give me an opportunity to if I have a shocking season I say a shocking season anything outside of the European places would be a shocking season so having a look at how to get into Europe then so even a top place finish doesn't get us into the group stage of the Champions League we actually go in at the first qualifying round so Greek football is in the mud and there are no full Europa League places neither as second third and fourth all get Europa Conference League so yeah, it's going to be difficult to generate revenue and especially get that reputation build as well as we try to bring in better players to push the club forward. So what about finances wise then? So finances, we've got 171k to spend. Wowzers. Overall balance is 1.1 million. Wage budget is 220k and we're 6k under that. Debt and loans then. We've got... 2.3 net debt, very happy with that. I was expecting to see hundreds of millions of pounds worth of debt, so that is a bonus. But that must mean then that we've brought some players in, have we? We spent 800k on players. So, what did I get actually when we look at the finances? Do I get 100% of revenue? So, if I go on to sell any players, then yeah, I'm going to at least bring the money back in and be able to recycle it. So competitions wise then we've got the Greek Cup and the Greek Super League and what is the expectation for us this season? Surely it's like a top 3 finish. So season preview wise we're actually expected a top 4 finish there. We've got no players as it stands in the Media Dream 11. Olympia I cost 2-1 to one to win the league. Payak 9-2 to two and AEK 5-1. to one. We're 25 to 25-1. So you can see that there's a real split anyway. Those top 4 teams will battle it out but then Aris in 5th place at 250-1 to one to win the league. So yeah top 4 fighting it out. So at least we should be getting some kind of European football. But last season, obviously, we didn't even get that. So we start off this season without a distraction of the Europa Conference League. 
So squad dynamics wise and team keys in his poor club atmosphere is average. Managerial support is good. How's it looking there? So I've got four players to support us, 21 players that have no real opinion of us and no players to pose us. Corbellis is the most influential player at the club and he is injured. He's out for seven to eight months with a hernia. Wowzers. Currently capped 23 times by Greece as well. So squad-wise, and I've got quite a deep squad. I can see straight away who's my highest earner. Villa Fanes, 29-year-old Argentinian. 1.7 million is valued at. We're paying him 12 and a half grand a week. Wowzers. And then obviously my highest transfer value player is Alexander Ropolis. That's absolutely not how you pronounce that. We'll try again. Alexandra Pololis. No, done it. So we'll call him Alex. Alex, there we go. <laughs> it's going to make hard work of that. So yeah, Alex, 19-year-old, Greek international. He's got one cap already. Current ability three-star, potential ability four-star. 7.2 million is valued at. He's not going anywhere. But looking at his squad, oh, there's a guy there called Wankar. What a name. He's been done dirty. That's not even his proper name. His name is Juan Carlos Perez Lopez. Having that on the back of your shirt, there you go. He has been done dirty. One car, everybody, down at left back. So finally then, looking at the squad depth, you know, I've got a 4-4-2 locked in at the minute. Federico Makeda, what a player he was. A 29-year-old now, he's at Manchester United, wasn't he? He'd done little bits there before moving on. But yeah, he's the best striker at the club. With Palacios, out on that left-hand side is Wanka, Mauricio and Villafanes. With in the middle, there's Maurizio. He is the best midfielder at the club. 32 year old now and then Palacios out on the right hand side we've, we've only actually got one left back at the club and we've only got two right backs at the club at centre backs then Schickenveld 29 year old Dutchman hasn't got any international caps we got him on a free transfer he played 27 times last season and what about in goal then so I've got Dudis 28 year old Greek international with two caps and Brignoli, 29 year old Italian who was the number one so he's only just joined us actually on a free transfer this season so we've got loads to do in this transfer window and I'm excited to get stuck in. Like I say, overturning Olympia Icos is going to be a challenge, but I think we'll have enough about us over the next couple of seasons. As long as we can maintain that 100% revenue coming back in, then I think we're on to a winner. Right, so the transfer window is done and we've had three in, we've had three out. And I've managed to generate a little bit of sales that I've recycled back into the team. But I have brought in one big loan transfer. Somebody for me that is absolutely quality. John Karakaburu. Now this guy's only 18 year old. Like, watch this space for this guy. In the FM21 cycle, he was incredible. He's also equally good in the FM22 cycle. This is the first time I've had him. I think I'm 19 rebuilds in now. And this is the first time I've brought him in. On the FM22 game. So yes, acceleration and pace, 16 apiece. Dribbling 16, heading 16, technique 16. Plays up front as a striker. He's on loan from Real Saucy Dad. Current ability 3 star, potential ability 4 star. Currently valued up to £20 million. Pounds. We've brought him in on loan. He cost me 425k to bring him in. He's not played a game for Real Saucy Dad. The first team that is. In the contract though, when I've brought him in, there's an optional future fee of £24 million. Pounds, and I've got him for two seasons. So the loan will last 24 months. So there's an opportunity by the end of those two seasons that we have made have 24 million pound in the bank obviously if this guy's banging in 30 goals a season then i will be buying him for 24 million pounds but anyway let's talk about the players that have left us so the first player out the door is uffy beck now he's got three caps for denmark he's not a very good player at all we got him on a free transfer he didn't play a game for his last season and we've let him go off for 26 and a half k there you go what more can i say he was terrible Lucas Villafanes, he has gone off to Nexcata in Mexico for 925k. We spent 325k on him. Originally, then he went out to Alien Sport for 875k. Marilla got him on a free transfer and he ended up coming back to us. Played 26 games last season, two goals. Can play behind a striker, but realistically in the centre of midfield. So yeah, we got a bit of money in for him, just so I had some funds to play with. And then the last player to go was Yassin Ayub. So he has gone off to Casablanca for 400k. We got him on an undisclosed fee. And he only played nine times last season. Played, played 15 times in two seasons. So then joining Karakaburo is Yuan Meniz. Now central midfielder. Can play behind the striker. But he's going to play there. Technically quality. Cross on 16. Corner 16. Free kick take 17. Long shot 16. I'm hoping to get plenty out of him this season. We did spend a bit of money on him. 325k. Which is a considerable amount. Considering I had nothing at all. But last season he played in the Greek Super League. 26 times 3 goals. The season before that for Valos. 28 times 5 goals. Decent player, 29 year old, I get a couple of seasons out of him and you never know, he might get plenty of goals and assists and I might be able to sell him on for a profit. 
And then the final player through the door then was the 20-year-old Portuguese, Sandro Cruz. Now, he brought him in from Benfica for 350k. He never played a game in their first team, but did play games in their B team, three games last season. Can play out on that left-hand side. Crossing and dribbling, 13 and 12. Acceleration and pace, 13 and 14. Decent player. Marking 10, tackling 11. Head and 8, a bit on the lower side. But for somebody that's going to play out on my left-hand side, he's got quite decent attributes. So finances then, I've still got 246k in the transfer budget, wage budget is 217k and I'm currently spending 195 overall balance is 1.7 million and net debt is 894k, it, we're alright for debt, I'm not worried about that. So tactic wise then, we're basically going to play a 4-3-3, it's, it's the current tactic I'm using in my portal down save but this is how we're going to line up, we do this in goal, Cruz, Panguras, Veles and Costiras. At right back with Ruben Perez in the holding role, Meniz and Mauricio in the midfield, Matis Vital and Chat Zigavanasis with Karakabiru up front. We're playing a tick attack up and we're playing on a balanced mentality. I may change it out, we may go a little bit more attacking. However, they do want us to play possession based football. You know, there's an opportunity if I could change that to control possession. But we are going to go with the tick attacker at the minute. Squad dynamics wise then, team keys is average, club atmosphere is very good and managerial support is good. Top influencers wise, has anything really changed? Now I've got six players to support, there's 19 players that have no real opinion of us. Competitions wise, obviously we still got the Super League and the Greek Cup. Has anything changed as far as the season expectations go and the preview? So we're still expected a fourth place finish and we've got no players in that media dream 11. And then schedule wise this season, and we've had a very good pre-season. We lost, we played AEK in a friendly and we were beaten 2-1 there. We scored a 94th minute goal, actually 2-0 down. But we start off with games against Olympiacos and AEK. So the two favourites to take the league this season, that's who we come up against. So not ideal for us. However, you know, if we can get something out of those games, you never know. But all I'm after this season is a top four finish and European football. So yes, what we're going to do is we're going to move forward then to the end of season one. Well, hopefully, Karakaburu gets plenty of goals and powers us into Europe. Right then guys, so season one is over and we've absolutely bossed it. We have ended up winning the league by 11 points. Olympiacos have had an absolute shocker. Payok there and AEK is a top four. That was the expected top four. And we have a look at the league table in all its glory. So as you can see there, this is the first half of it before you split away. We were actually one point clear of Payok then. We won four games in our last four. Player 26, 117, 4 draws, 5 losses, 44 goals scored, and we only conceded 16 goals all season. Then splits off into the championship group, where we were on fire really, we only conceded 22 goals all season, 80 points on the board. We won one game in our last five again there, but we have been sensational there. So having a look then at the past positions, you can see we made ourselves up into top spot on match day 23. But then when we look at the championship group, we were sat in top spot all the way through. Nobody come anywhere near us. Olympiacos moving about a bit with Park. So basically the top three teams fighting it out. But Panathinaikos absolutely tearing it up and winning the league. And when we look at the competitions, we also won the Greek Cup. So we've won the domestic double with a 4-0 victory. Over AEK there, over one of our bitter rivals, 27 shots, 12 on target, Kalitos with a hat-trick, Mauricio with a penalty on 21 minutes. So there we go, one season in, completed it. It's all about Europe now, but for me, I wanted to dominate the Greek Super League, and this is a fantastic start for us. But what has it done to the finances? So financially, it's an absolutely nothing. Even though we've won the league, we've got minus £4 million in the overall balance. Transfer budget-wise, they're giving us 223 k we are getting 100% of transfer revenue, but that just is not good enough if we are wanting to push on. Looking at debt and loans and how we're looking, £4.3 million net debt, 173 k transfer debt. But really, that's just not going to improve the squad. So looking at the squad dynamics and team keys, is very good. Club atmosphere and manager support, both excellent. I've got players that want better playing time, but I'm not overly worried about that at the time being. You know, we'll have a clear out. I've got 22 players that now support us. Three players have no real opinion of us. Karakaburu is one of those players now. And then when we look at the player stats, so Kalitos scored 25 goals this season. Let's have a look at 18 in the league, 7 in the Greek Super Cup. So let's have a look at how he performed in the league then. So goals-wise, he finished in second place with 18. Vital for a scored 17 goals as well. Youssef El Rabi was the top goal scorer there with 24 goals in the league. Let's get him scouted. He's not for sale anyway. He's 35 years old, so he's probably past it. But this guy, uh, Wankar, what a player. High savage rating at 7.41. Kotsiris had the most assists with 10. Puranguras had the best pass completion at 96%. Wankar and Kalitas had the most player of the match awards with 9 apiece. Most yellow cards was Perez. And most red cards were Cheveld, Yanka, and Sanchez with 1 apiece. But then having a look at the team stats. So team stats-wise then, we scored 63 goals, which is the third best. We only conceded 22 goals all season, which 
which is the best. Yellow cards wise, 56, which is the seventh best. Red cards wise, three, which is the seventh worst. And our average attendance was just over 12,000, which is fourth best. That's quite poor average attendance. But that is it then, guys. Absolutely bossed it. What a season that was. I didn't expect it to be so clean cut. In fairness, I thought if we can break it to the top three, then we're on to winner. But we have Champions League qualifying places because that's where we start, unfortunately. We're not going to make it into the group stages straight away. But yeah, that is the aim for next season. So what we're going to do is we're going to move forward over the transfer window where I look at spending that massive amount of money that the board have given us. But it looks like we're going to have to sell to buy. So yes, I'll see you on the other side. Right then guys, so season two and once again I've had to sell players to buy players, you know, it's not been great, however, we have brought in some fantastic players that I think will take us to that next level. When we look at the transfer budget, I've now got 1.9 million still left to spend, I'm going to get 100% of transfer revenue, obviously there's nothing else happening now, wage budget is 206k and I'm currently spending 181, and my overall balance is 2.8 million, we're in a decent place, financially, transfer debt is 2.5 million, net debt is zero. But looking at the outside one car, he is the first player to go. He left on a free transfer and has gone to Alaves. Had a decent season for his last season. 30 games, 1 goal, 6 assists and 6 player to match performances. So he will be missed. The next player out then was Makeda. He has gone last season. He didn't even do anything for us. 3 games, 1 goal. That was it. And Venezia come in and took him for 2.3 million. So I'm happy to see the back of him if I'm honest. Then Zavamir Salija, what a name that is. He left us for 1.3 million. He only had a season with us where he played nine games, one goal last season. So yes, centre-back, I think it's a decent player and he could have still had a future with us. But 1.3 million, that's good money. The next player to go is our goalkeeper, Alberto Brignoli. So he is left for £5 million. It's £2.5 million with £2.5 million add-ons. Obviously, it's gone through there as a total cost. But yeah, we're getting it in half. So we've got £2.5 million this season. We get £2.5 million next season. Now, he only played one season for us. 33 games, 19 goals conceded. He was solid. But yeah, £5 million overall. Yes, he's now valued at £11.5 million. But that kind of money to like recycle it into the squad is massive. And the last player to leave was Cantalapaidra, so he has gone off to Real Zaragoza for £1.7 million. He played 17 times for his last season with no goals and one assist. Not really too much to say about this guy, he wasn't good enough to be in the first team anyway. So players coming in then, the first player for Uber Dois, the 31 year old Englishman with 14 caps, Nathaniel Klein, and he can play out on the left and right hand side as a wing back. We're bringing him on a free transfer from Palace where he played 11 times in the Premier League last season. Decent player for his acceleration and pace, 12 and 13. Crossing 11, dribbling 9. Not tackling of 16. Teamwork and work rate 16 as well. He'll play plenty of games for us this season. Currently valued at 1.5 million. Not bad when you get him on a free transfer. Then obviously I needed to bring in another goalkeeper, so I brought in Miguel Silva, 27-year-old Portuguese, under-21 international. He's had some under-21 caps. But yeah, we brought him in for 135k from Maritimo, where they got him on a free transfer last season. Played eight times, conceded 15 goals. A shocking average rate in there, but he's my backup anyway. Obviously, he's going to be deputy. He may get a couple of games this season, but I wouldn't expect too many. And then I needed to strengthen out on the left-hand side, so I brought in Alfonso Figueiredo, 29-year-old Portuguese player again. Brought him in for 60k from Armadora in the Portuguese second league. So, again, you know, he's not going to get too much game time. He's a decent player, though, currently valued up to 425k. Current ability free stand, he's playing to his full potential. But yeah, just another squad dev option out there. And then finally, I spent the big money, so £6 million on Lorenzo Lucas. So this is a guy that I've had in plenty of a rebuilds, and he is an absolute superstar. The problem that I've got is I brought him in for £6 million, and within the contract to try and get him, I've got a minimum release fee clause of £9.25 So, yeah, it's not great. Naturally, I can offer him a new contract at the end of next season, hopefully. Or there's potential here for us to miss out on a massive amount of profit. We're not going to make a loss, you know. We're naturally going to get more money from what we paid for him. But he'll end up being a 30, 40 million pound player. And we'll let him go for under 10 million pound. Current ability 4 star, potential ability 5 star. Finishing 16, heading 16. Determination 17, jumping reach 17. He is six foot seven as well. This guy will get plenty of goals this season. So tactics wise then, this is how we're going to line up. We're going to still go the same way with a 4-3-3. With Dodis in goal, Figueiredo, Pongaras, Schenkeveld and Kotsiris at the back. With Velez in the holding role, Ruben Perez and Corbelis in the midfield. With Chats in Gavangis out on that left-hand side and Palacios out on the right. And then Luca up front. So that's a quality team. Some real struggles with your pronunciations there. But yeah, quality team nonetheless. And then when we look at the competitions wise then, so we've got the Super League this season, the Champions League, which we're still in, and we're still trying to get into those group stages and the Greek Cup. Obviously, we're holders 
of that as well. So looking at the season preview then, what is the expectation this season? So even though we won the league last season, we're still expected a fourth place finish. With Aris now 25-1 to 1 to win the league as well. We've got no players in the Media Dream 11. That does disappoint me. But it doesn't really surprise us. And then schedule wise, like I say, we're still going in the Champions League. We're now into the third qualifying round. If we get through this one, we're already 2-0 up against Partizan Belgrade. But if we get through that, we go into the final qualifying round. And then after that, we should be playing in the Greaves stages. That draw has not taken place yet. But I can imagine the teams that we come up against are going to be difficult. So we start off with games against Atromatis, Apollo. Zanti, Calafia and Volos is my first five games. All winnable games for me. You know, we started off with games against Olympiacos and AEK last season. So yeah, a real opportunity for us then guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to move forward to the end of season two. Well, hopefully we've done the double again and we've got into the Champions League group stages. Right, so season two is over then and we have done it again. We have won the league with five points clear of Olympiacos. This team here, Panatolikos, they finished on 68 points in third place. Payok on 63 and AK in 5th place on 62 points. Yeah, we absolutely dominated again this time round. Let's have a look at the league table then. So looking at the first half of the league table, we ended up finishing 3 points clear at the top. But then when we have a look at the championship group, you can see there. So played 36, won 22, drew 9, lost 5. 65 goals scored, 29 goals conceded, plus 36 goal difference, 75 points on the board. And then looking at the past positions, how did we do? So we were up and down, but you know, ended up there in the last couple of games, winning the league place. And then we were obviously looking at the group stage. We were in top spot all the way through in the groups as well, so bossed it there. So competitions-wise then, obviously in the Champions League, we didn't actually make it into the full Champions League group stage. We were knocked out 3-0 on aggregate by Besiktas there. We then went into the Europa League where we ended up finishing in third place. So we didn't even make it past the Europa League group stage. So we ended up going into the Europa Conference League where we finished runner-up. We ended up losing 3-1 in extra time to West Ham. You know, West Ham, a quality team. You can see they had 28 shots, 15 on target. We had 15 and 9. Divock Origi with a goal on 61, before Andreas on 72, and then Harris Severovic with goals on 105 and 108, yeah, so we get our heart broken there. But we did end up winning the Greek Cup again, so we've done the domestic double again. Who did we end up winning against in the final there? So we ended up winning extra time, 1-0 against Payak, let's have a look. A goal on 114 minutes, wowzers, they had a man sent off as well, so that probably changed the game for us in fairness. So finances-wise then, this transfer budget, we've got £9.8 million to spend, but we're only getting 70% of transfer revenue. Overall balance is £15 million. It continues to increase. Wage budget-wise, 213k, and our committed spending is 224k. So there's increases in all sorts in there. When we have a look at the squad dynamics then, we team cohesion is very good, club atmosphere is excellent, and so is my geo support. I've got players that want better deals, we can sort all that out. Kari Kaburu will now be leaving us, obviously he's had his two years with us. We did have that bio clause, I hyped this guy up so much, and he's been a bit of a flop if I'm honest. I expected better of him in his first season, 21 appearances, 4 goals. This season he only got 14 appearances with 3 goals, so yeah, Kari Kaburu, he will be leaving us this season. So top influencers wise then, 20 player supporters, one player has no opinion of us, and that player is Karikaburu. And then finally then looking at the player stats, the top goal scorer this season was Sebastian Palacios with 21 goals. The highest average rating was Luca with 7.23. So Luca this season got 19 goals in all competitions, but it wasn't enough. Obviously Palacios with 21. Most assists was Sassos with 11. Best pass completion was Schekenveld with 97%. Most player of the match awards was Luca with 10. Most yellow cards was Dimitris with 16. And most red cards was Alfonso Figueredo with 3. And then when we look at those team stats, the team stats wise then... We scored 65 goals, which is the second best. We conceded 29, which is the third best. Yellow cards wise, 71, which is the fourth best. Four red cards this season, which is poor. And the average attendance was 15,000. So there we go then, guys. Another season done. Another double. And now we're going to go into our third season where we need to push for Champions League again. You know, we need to be trying to get into those group stages and getting through those playoff legs. That, that's the big thing for us. You know, the money's there. Are we going to get out the group? Probably not. If we can get a third place finish, then we can drop down into Europa League and we start to make some money there as well. So yes, what we're going to do is we're going to move forward into Season 3 where we try to take this squad to the next level. 
Right guys, so where to start with this season three, this pre-season and everything that's happened. So I suppose we'll start with the finances, or as we always do, but yeah, we've had a bit of a shocker as far as the outgoings go. So transfer budget-wise, and we've still got £2.7 million to spend. Wage budget-wise, we've now been given 253k, we're currently spending 232. Overall balance, £36 million, absolutely loving that. When we look at debt and loans, not a lot going on. But leaving the club then is Lorenzo Luca, and I spoke about his transfer release clause at the start of last season and how I was going to get caught out, and I have. We brought him for £6 million and we sold him on for £9.25 million to Burnley, when they activated his release clause and he's currently valued up to £30 million. Look at the state of him, he could have at least had another season with us. We may have had the potential to renew his contract and hopefully get rid of that release clause. It was never going to happen, I don't think. We were always going to lose him, but I'm disappointed to have lost him after 12 months. And then the only other player to have left us is Nathaniel Klein. So he had a season with us, another guy that's had 12 months with us. We had him on a free transfer and we sold him to Portsmouth for 1.6 million who were playing in Skybet League One. So yeah, not bad for us. He played 20 times last season, four assists, two player to match performances, a 6.99. At 32 year old, I'm happy to get that money for him. So players joining us and the first player through the door was Luca Vignali. Now 27 year old, right back. With acceleration and pace both 13, that cross and 14 and dribbling 11. I'm hoping this guy's going to be a massive asset for us this season. We've already played eight games in the Champions League. He's got three assists within that. And we brought him in, like I say, free transfer from Spezia last season. Where he only played three times in Saria. I'm not overly worried about that, you know. He's a quality option for us. And probably going to be first choice at right back. Coming in at centre-back then is a 29-year-old Argentinian, a German Conti. Now, he just plays at centre-back, that is it. That's heading 16, marking 14, tackling 14, jump and read 17. He is 6 foot 4, 29-year-old, obviously plenty of experience. Currently valued up to £6.4 million. And we got him on a free transfer from Benfica. Now, he's been at Benfica a while, again, for £4 million in 2018. He's been out on loan all over the place. A bit of a journeyman when it comes to that. And he didn't play a game for their first team last season. And we got him on a free transfer. And I am happy to bring him in. Current ability four and a half stand he's playing to his full potential as well I then spent 60k bringing in the 25 year old Liberian international with 39 caps and one goal Oscar now he's currently valued up to 3.1 million pound playing to his full potential at three and a half star and we got it for 60k like I say from Slavia Praha we played 22 times last season 21 the season before an average rate in there 6.94 isn't the best but this guy now first touch 16 passing 17 vision 13 could be a little bit higher but hopefully he'll do the stuff for us when you look there in the Champions League he's played seven times with one goal and four assists solid then I brought in a 26-year-old South African with 45 caps and three goals, Rivaldo Coetzi. And now I've had this guy before and he's a quality player. Really wants to play as a centre-back, but he's going to play in the midfield there. Where you can see that passing 18, position and 17, determination 18, vision 13 as well. The first touch 11 could be a little bit better. He's currently valued at the £3.5 million and he's playing to his full potential, which is three and a half star. We've got him on a free transfer from Sundowns where he played 20 times last season. And another guy that I'm really happy to have in the squad. Then I went out and spent a little bit of money on Ruan, a 24-year-old Brazilian who plays as centre-back, can play out on the left-hand side as a left-back, but doesn't really want to. Heading 14, marking 13, tackling 13, strength 14 as well, acceleration and pace 15 and 16, very good indeed. Currently valued at 2.4 million and potential ability is 4-star, and I brought him in for just over half a million pound from Sassuolo, where he played 7 times for them over 3 seasons, but again, very happy to get this guy through the door. Next of all, and I had to spend some money, obviously, with Lorenzo Luca going, and I brought in Joel Piroe. Now, he joins us from Swansea, where he played two seasons in the championship, scoring 20 goals across two seasons, 10 goals last season. 4.2 million is a bit of money to spend on him, but finishing 15, composure 15 as well. That balance of 14, acceleration and pace, acceleration 11, pace 13, but yeah, hopefully he'll get some goals for us. He's got three goals so far in five appearances in the Champions League. Then I brought in another Italian, Vincenzo Milico. So 23-year-old, can play as a striker, but also as a left winger. Really good player. Acceleration and pace, 14-13. That dribble and 13 crossing again could be a little bit higher. But I, I rate this guy. 3.7 million pounds, current ability. Three star potential ability, three and a half star. Now Bologna brought him in for 190k last season. He paid four times. And we spent over the odds, don't get me wrong, 3.2 million pounds. He's currently valued of three up to £3.7 million. Pounds. But yeah, hopefully this guy will do the business for us this season. Had three substitute appearances so far in the Champions League with one assist. And then finally, I brought in a Greek international, Konstantinos 
Mavropanos. Now, this guy was at Arsenal where he left them to go to Porto for 5.75 million. He played one season there, four appearances with a 6.3 rating, and we've brought him in for 3.9 million pounds. Now, we spent again by wanting to bring in another Greek international. I've done that. Like I say, he's got nine casted, one goal for Greece, 25 year old centre back with heading 15, mark and 13, tackling 14, six foot four with that jump and reach of 16 as well, and strength 16. Very, very good player for us, valued for 6.8 million. Current ability four star, and he's currently playing to his full potential as well his media description is a powerful center back and i'm hoping he'll do the bits for us this season so tactically then how are we going to line up so we're going to line up with deodis in goal Cruz, Mavropanos, Conti and Vignali at the back with Kurabelis in that old role with Coetzee and Alex in the middle. Milico and Chatsa Gavanis out on that right-hand side and then Perry up front. Hopefully, like I say, that'll do bits for us. We're playing a tick attacker balanced mentality. It's done us proud in the last two seasons. Let's carry that on. And then squad dynamics-wise, Team Keeshan is good and club atmosphere and managerial support is very good. Top influencers-wise then... I've got 18 players to support us, four players that have no real opinion of us. I'm happy with like the squad harmony here. And then competitions-wise then, so we've got the Super League, the Champions League and the Greek Cup. Now we have managed to make our way through into the Champions League group stage where you can see that we were in with Real Madrid, Leipzig and Benfica. A third place finish would be an absolute miracle in that group. You know, there's plenty of worse teams we could come up against. We're not going to get anything from Real Madrid. But when you look at our schedule, that is that is the pre-season. Look at the state of that pre-season with all those Champions League qualifying games in there. You know, we had to go in at the very first qualifying round. We're the champions of Greece and we've had to go in and go up against Valletta from Malta. What is going on there, you know? The coefficients and whatnot and how we've been ranked is absolutely shocking. But yeah, we've managed to make our way all the way through. We, we took on the likes of Basel and won there. And we also took on Slavia Pra and won there. After going 1-0 down, we, we took them on at home and won them 3-1. But yeah, it's been a struggle, but it doesn't matter. Champions League revenue is going to be absolutely massive for the club. And then finally then, what's the expectation for us this season? So we're 10-1 to 1 to win the league. Olympiacos, still the favourites. We've got one player in the Media Dream 11, and that's Chatsia Gavanis. So, you know, that's it. One player in there. I'm still happy with how that's going. Is that Isco? That's not the Isco, is it? It is. So they've got Isco from Real Madrid in their centre of Olympiacos' midfield. That is shocking. How much did they bring him in for? £4.4 4 million pounds as well. We have missed a the trick there. How much are they paying him? Twenty two and a half grand a week. That is a lot of money. We can't really compete with that. It is a struggle. But yeah, we've got massive things to do this season as we try to go back to back to back in the league and get a domestic double in fairness. You know, the cup and the league is there to be had. And they just trying to get a third place finish in the Champions League. But you never know. We could cause an upset and get a second place finish and get into the further stages. I don't think that's going to happen. But yeah, if we can get a third place finish in the Champions League, that'd be massive for us to drop in to the Europa League and do bits there. Right then, guys. So we're back for the end of season three, and we've done it again. We've won the league, ninety points on the board. We're absolutely dominating the Greek Super League, as you can see there. You know, our form just in that league stage: twenty-six games played, twenty wins, three draws, three losses, sixty-one goals scored, twenty conceded, plus forty-one goal difference, sixty-three points on the board, four points clear of Olympiacos. We've had an absolute shocker there. And then when we look at the championship group, 36 games played, 29 wins, 3 draws, 4 losses. So we lost one more game when the league split. 82 goals scored, 27 goals conceded, plus 55 goal difference, 90 points on the board, 18 points clear of Olympiacos. We absolutely bossed it. And then when we look at the past positions, as you can see there, basically from game day three, we've been in top spot. So we are well and truly dominating the domestic scene now. So as you can see, we won the Premier League, we won the Greek Cup. Winning the Greek Cup again. So that's three Greek Cups on the bounce as well. 4-1. As you can see there, we had 23 shots, 11 on target. Milico with two goals. And Tassos there as well. We absolutely dominate. And you look at it, like 23 shots, 11 on target, 54% possession. Nobody can get anywhere near us. However, Champions League then. As you can see there, we finished in bottom place in the Champions League. That was really the expectation when we were. We are going to do well to get out of that group at all. As Real Madrid topped the group with Benfica and Leipzig in second, we had a goal difference of minus 19. We conceded 20 goals and only scored one across six games. So finances-wise, and this is what the Champions League does to you guys. So you can see there, I've now got £24 million in the overall balance. My transfer budget is £25 million. I've got 100% of transfer revenue being made available. And my wage budget is now 335 k And I'm only spending 220 Debt and loans-wise, how we're looking. So transfer debt is now under £1 million. Dynamics wise then, team cohesion and managerial support is excellent, club atmosphere is good and I've got three players that are unhappy. When we look at top influencers wise then I've got 21 player supporters, the entire team supporters. What about the social group and everybody is in the core social group? That's what you call squad harmony. 
So looking at the player stats, then, Tasso scored 24 goals this season. He also had the highest average rate and a 7.62. He also had the most assists with 24 assists. What a season he's had. Let's have a look at him. He's bang average your best in the acceleration and pace both 16, so he is rapid, but he's playing out on that right hand side and he has scored goals for fun in the Super League. You can see there, 26 games played, 18 goals scored, 15 assists. That's got to be his best season by a mile as well. Best pass completion was Mavropanos with 96%. Most player of the match awards was obviously Tassos with 15. Most yellow cards, Vignali with 20. And Mooney's got two red cards this season. But let's have a look at the team stats. So team stats wise, then we scored 82, which was the best. We could see the 27, which is the best. Yellow cards wise, 59, which is the seventh worst. Red cards wise, three, which is the third worst. And our average attendance is the fourth best. I think it was third best last season. So we've had a little bit of a slip there. Just let's have a look at the squad in general then. Let's have a look at the goals overall. So Milico got 19 goals. Joel Piri, the player that obviously I brought in to score goals and replace Luca really, got 19 goals in all competitions, 14 in the league. So we have a look there. 31 games played, 14 in the league, 7 assists. That's his best season since his career started. So, you know, I'm happy with that. We got him for 4.2 million. What's he worth? 6.4 million. He's not going anywhere. This guy's only going to get better. And we've got a couple of seasons to keep him. So what we're going to do then, guys, is we're going to move forward now to season four, where we have absolutely, like I say, we're, we're dominating a domestic scene it's our season after season i have done what i set out to achieve and that was obviously the top of olympiacos now it's all about europe can we take that next step Right, so another eventful transfer window then, guys, as we've had plenty of outs, we've had plenty of ins as well. Finances-wise, we're still in a solid position. £15 million still in a transfer budget. We're still getting 100% of the transfer revenue. Wage budget is now 438k per week, and we're currently spending 431 Overall balance, up to £47 million. Debt and loans, £1.6 million. But naturally, I've lost my biggest player again. So last season, we lost Lorenzo Luca. This time, I've lost Alex. You know, 22-year-old Greek, international with 22 caps. He was the best player at the club when I took over. That's what I was being told. There was one or two that, you know, were there. But his current ability for star, potential ability for now star, he's now valued at £21 million. And he has been quality for us, you know. 27 games last season, three goals, three assists, a 7.17 rating. And that was his release clause, 9.15. So we've been stung again. There's nothing I can do. You know, I've tried to offer new contracts. He's rejected it as he had a couple of seasons left but I have been quite unfortunate again another player to go then was German Conti so he has gone off to Independiente in Argentina we got him on a free transfer he played 29 times his last season 5 goals solid centre back if I'm honest but we sold him off for 2.6 million then Miguel Silva, my backup goalkeeper, he has gone back to Portugal for £1 million to Santa Clara. Now, we got him for 135 k He didn't play a game for us in the first season, like I say, backup goalkeeper. But then last season, he made seven appearances with six conceded, three clean sheets. I think it's quite decent. You know, attributes-wise, goalkeeping, yes, that eccentricity at 18 isn't ideal. However, you know, solid. But yeah, to get that kind of money for him, happy. And he's now valued at £3.5 million. And then finally, you know, this is a fantastic deal for us. Sandro Cruz has gone off to Watford. He's 23-year-old, two caps for Angola. We bought him in for 350k, and we sold him to Watford in the championship for £5 million. That is a fantastic deal for us. He's a very good player, or he has been for us. You know, acceleration and pace, 13 and 15, crossing and dribbling. They're the things that I want. But yeah, £5 million, you just could not turn that down. So coming in there and plenty of players have joined us this season. The first player through the door is a 25-year-old Burkina Faso international with 22 caps, Madibo Sagnang. So like I say, centre-back, heading, marking, tackling, all okay, that marking at 13. We know we could improve on that a little bit. He's 25-year-old, 16 strength, current ability three and a half star, and he's playing to his full potential. He's currently valued up to £6 million, and we got him on a free transfer from Real Sociedad, where he hasn't played a game in a couple of seasons, but I'm not overly worried about that, and he's an upgrade in the centre of my defence. I then brought in another quality centre-back as well, Dino Peric, 30-year-old Croatian with two caps, heading 16, tackling 17, marking 15, strength 16, jump and reach 19, 6 foot 6, an absolute tower and presence in front of my goalkeeper. Now you can see their media description, powerful centre-back. Now he's current ability, potential ability, two and a half star, I'm not worried about that. And we got him on a free transfer from Dynamo, where he played 32 times last season with a 7 rating, but yeah, really, really good player for us here. Then I started to bring in some Greek players, so I've brought in a 26-year-old Aristis. Now, you guys can obviously decipher that surname. I'm just going to call him Aristis because, yeah, it's easier for me. So, 26-year-old, 15 caps for Greece, also got Germany as a second nationality. Can play in a holding role, but also in the midfield. All-rounded player, you know, you can see there. Current ability, three and a half star, potential ability, three and a half star as well. He's currently valued at £7 million, and I spent £4.1 on him from Heracles 
in Holland. I'm happy to get him in. 28 caps last season, three goals, two assists. And I just wanted to bring in some of that Greek international pedigree. Then I brought in some more Greek international pedigree in Kostas Staphylidis. So, so 30-year-old Greek international with 37 caps, two goals. I have overspent for this guy, I will be honest. At 30-year-old now, I've spent some big money. I spent £4.4 million on him after Stuttgart going for one6 He played 21 times in the Bundesliga last season. Can play out on that left-hand side, basically as a wing-back. I am happy to get him in. He's a very good player. Acceleration 11, pace 12. A bit on the slower side. Crossing 14, a dribbling at 8. Could be a bit of a sticking point. Like I say, I have overspent on this guy. But, again, I've got someone with Greek international caps. Then I brought in a 22-year-old Italian, Eddie Salcedo. So he's coming to play right up front. That is it. Finishing 12, composure 12. Jumping reach 13, balance 14. I'm hoping to get goals out of him. Non-competitively in the friendlies, he scored 5-in-5. Five five. In the Champions League, he scored 1-in-1 one one start. Obviously, he's got five substitute appearances in there as well. His current ability is 3-star. Potential ability is 3.5-star. But he is 22, and we got him in from 1.8 million from Inter. Didn't play a game for them last season. That doesn't surprise us. The season before that, he only played once. But I'm expecting big things from this guy as well. He can play out on that left-hand side. Should I want him to? He may end up moving out there. Who knows? Then I stepped for now at right back and I brought in Fernando Fonseca, Portuguese player that has joined us from Pacos Ferreira. So yeah, he played 19 times last season in the Portuguese Premier League and we brought him in for 975k. He's a depth option. That is a current ability two and a half star and he's playing to his full potential. Going to at 1.9 million. Acceleration 15, pace 14, cross and dribble and total piece. That's why I bought him in. Then I wanted an absolute speed merchant, so I've brought in Hakamani Malambi. Now, acceleration 18, pace 16, crossing 11, dribbling 17, flare 16, all about that. Now, he can play behind the striker, but we're going to play him on that right-hand side as an attacking midfielder. He's currently playing to his full potential at 3.5 star, and we brought him for 375k from Sundowns, the same place we brought in Coetzee. Now, he played 25 times last season, two goals, three assists, and for us already... He scored 3-5 in, in the Champions League and also got two assists, so a solid start for him. Then again, I strengthened out on that left-hand side defensively again with Yanis Hamachi. Good all-rounded player, you can see again. Acceleration of pace, 14. Crossing and dribbling, 15 and 13. Current ability, 3-star. Brought him in for 2.2 million from Bovista, where he played 28 times with 10 assists last season. But yeah, another really good option defensively. And then finally, I went out and I spent big money on a goalkeeper. So I've brought in Andre Kola, 29-year-old Czech Republic international with eight caps. Look at those goalkeeping attributes. Solid, really, really good player. Currently have added £16 million. Pounds. He is my first choice goalkeeper and he's playing to his full potential. And I brought him in for £7 million pounds from Wolves. So Wolves got him last season for £4.5 million. He conceded three goals in one game and he never played again with a 5.8 rating. But yeah, we, I've probably overpaid slightly. £5 million pound is where I should really have been here. But this guy could potentially take us to the next level. So tactically then, looking at my best 11, we're going to stay with the formation at 4-3-3. With Kohler in goal, Hamachi, Peric, Mavropanos and Vignali at the back. With Aristis in there, Cabellis and Coetzee in the middle. Milico and Malambi and then Salcedo up from what team? What a team, right? And I've got so many decent options on the bench as well. So yes, that is going to be my starting 11. Dynamics-wise then, I've got two players that are fairly unhappy. Chatsa Gavanis. Now, this guy, £15 million offer coming from Leeds. Not happening. Absolutely not happening. I'm not letting him go. He was our best player last season. Even though he is average, let's have a look. You know, when you look at him technically, mentally, physically, he's got pace and that's about it. But I'm just not letting him go. He was a Greek international. I just can't let him leave. And then when we look at players and supporters, I've got 19 players. Three players have no real opinion of us and nobody opposes us. So competitions-wise then, we've got the Greek Super League. We have got back into the Champions League again. That group, I reckon, we could get a third place there. We're definitely not beating PSG and Manchester United. But if we can get something from Copenhagen, home and away, we are on to a winner there. And, you know, then we'll drop down to the Europa League and we will be laughing. And we have also got the Greek Cup. You know, those two should be dead certs as it stands. And then, surely, we have got to be favourites. But not, we're 9-2. to two. We're now second favourites. We've got three players in the Media Dream 11. Kola, Matropanos... And Chatsia Guevara. So, yes, three players in there. That is it. You know, the expectation is Olympia Icos are going to win the league, even though they haven't won it in three seasons. But, you know, never mind. So, yes, what we're going to do is we're going to move forward to the end of season four. Well, hopefully, we do ourselves proud in the Champions League. We get a third place finish, if not better, you know. Or anything better than a third place finish in that group, it'd be a miracle. So, yeah, then we drop down into the Europa League and hopefully we can do bits in there. So, what we're going to do then is, like I say, we're going to move forward to the end of season four. Well, hopefully, we've dominated the Greek domestic competitions again and give a good account of ourselves in Europe. 
Right then, guys, so season four is done. It's Groundhog Day again as, as we win the Greek Super League. There you can see 88 points on the board. We end up finishing five points clear of Olympiacos. Let's have a look again at the championship group. So you can see there, you know, Olympiacos losing on the last game of the season. I don't think that would have made too much difference as our form has been decent. 26 games played, 27 wins, 7 draws, 2 defeats. We only conceded 21 goals all season. Scoring 86, Olympiacos scoring 89. Now, what about the past positions then when we have a look at it? In fairness, it wasn't all plain sailing for us. You know, we haven't dominated the league this time around. We actually dropped down into fourth place at one point, but then we moved back into top spot. And then what about in the championship group? How did we get on there? So we sat in top spot throughout that as well. So that was never in danger. Olympiacos, and I'm assuming just sat in second, yes. So competitions-wise then, we didn't even get out the group stage in the Champions League. That is disappointing. But we did win the Greek Cup again. So we've done another double, and this time we've done it over Olympiacos. So we ended up winning 2-1 there, and we had a man sent off as well. Orestes was sent off in 64 minutes straight red, even though we'd had a yellow card already. But Pirro got us out of trouble on 50 and 113, but we actually conceded in a 94th minute of stoppage time. But we dominated that game as far as shots and shots on target go, but possession, that went to Olympiacos with 54%. So what about finances then? We've got £28 million to spend this season with an 80% of transfer revenue being made available. I don't really think we need to be selling anybody on. We've got £43 million in the overall balance and wage budget is half a million pounds. Squad dynamics wise and team cohesion, club atmosphere and magical support are all very good. I've got players that are unhappy, not massively unhappy. There was nobody opposes us. Eight players have no real opinion of us and 14 players support us. And then when we look at the player stats, then look at that, Pirro with 33 goals this season. He's at the top in the league. Let's have a look. So player overview then. Who is the top goal scorer? Sonny with 23. So Pirro only got 18 in the league. Chatterjee Giovannis as well got 22 goals. So he was actually the top goal scorer in the league for us. Miliko there as well with 13. So plenty of goals from our three front men. Chadzig Ivanis also had the highest average rate and, and the most assists at 16. Best pass completion was Sagnar with 97%. Most player of the match awards was Chadzig Ivanis as well with 12. Most yellow cards was Vignali with 20. And most red cards, Hamachi and Aristis with 2. And then when we look at the team stats, so team stats wise, we scored 86, which is the second best. Obviously, we were behind Olympiacos there. We conceded 21 goals there. That is solid, which was the best in the league. Yellow cards wise, 72, which is the fifth worst. And red cards too, which is the sixth first average attendance now the fourth best at 19,000 so there you go then guys decent season for us this one when we are looking at the squad then overall as you can see there goals wise Perot with 33 Chatsi Gavanis with 31 Milka with 15 Mavropanos my centre back with 13 goals there as well what about assists Chatsi Gavanis as well with 16 there Staphylidis with 12 Hamachi with 11 Milica with 11 so across the board what about transfer value then even though he scored 33 goals this season Pro is only valued up to 10 million pounds and that is the problem however I am not looking at selling this season so then guys what we are going to do is we are going to move forward we're going to go forward to the final season where it's all about doing a little bit better in Europe now as we are well and truly the most dominant team in Greece Right, so I did say just before the break that I wasn't going to sell too many players on. And I have let a large amount of the squad go. Finances-wise, we're in a fantastic place. We've still got £26 million in the overall transfer budget. Wage budget-wise, we've got 499 k to spend. Budget. We were just under that half a million pound mark before that, but we're currently spending 483 k Overall balance is £65 million. Debt and loan-wise, obviously that's money that we still owed. So we still owed £13 million from transfers. But when we look at the transfer history there, before I go through the ins and outs, you can see that I've managed to bring in a total of £46.5 million in revenue and we spent £27.5 So players leaving then quickly, Fernando Fonseca, he has gone off to Palmer, obviously we brought him in last season to play on that right hand side, he's a fringe option and he has gone. The next player to go was, was Antonio Xavier, now he's been with us since I took over, he's been out on loan a couple of times. Last season he played 12 times with 3 assists, 2 player to match performances, looks quite decent but at 33 Time to move him on, and he left for 900k. Madibo Sagadang, a player that we got a couple of seasons ago, he has gone off to Benfica. So last season we got him on a free transfer, 23 appearances, two goals, one player to match performance. Yeah, free transfer we got him for, and Benfica, 12.5 million. Decent, you know, he was not a bad centre back, he was a very good player for us, a 26 year old. He still had plenty of time to get even better as well and to move into his prime. But that was very good money for a guy we got on a free transfer. 
Oscar, another player to leave us, a 27-year-old. We brought him in for 60k and we sold him for 7.5 million to Watford. Watford absolutely loving taking our players, but yeah, he has gone. He was okay. First touch and pass in 16 and 17. He was able to knock it about in the midfield, but that vision of 13 probably let him down. Then my substitute goalkeeper, Socrates Duidis. Now he it was like ever present to start with. 29 appearances, 21 goals conceded. Then last season, he played one and conceded one. This time, though, he went to Sponzi for 1.4 million. He's already played four games for them, so he's their first choice keeper in the championship. Then my top goal scorer last season, Joe Pirori. Now, he was valued for £10 million, and we've let him go to Leipzig for £22.5 million. He's played two times in the Bundesliga and scored two goals, so not bad for them already. Last season, like I say, he played 33 times, 18 goals, and that was just in the league, but he was 33 in all competitions. But again, we paid £4.2 million for him, and we've got £22.5 million, so a good deal. So coming in then, the first player through the door is a 28-year-old Spaniard, Jesus Vallejo. So he joins us on a free transfer from Real Madrid. Now, he has been all over the place, but Real Madrid took him on for 3.3 million. He went to Wolves, actually, in the Premier League and played two times, and they spent £1 million getting in there. He was on loan at TSK in Moscow last season, and again, he only played two times. He's currently ability four-star, and he's playing to his full potential. Heading, and marking, and tackling, that heading the 12, you know, not the greatest, but marking and tackling 14 and 15. Acceleration and pace, 10 and 12. He's going to be a fringe player. He wants to play just behind the midfield, but we're going to play him at centre-back. I then brought in Pedro Musa. Now, this guy was the hero of, of my Boa Vista rebuild, and we have brought him in for £5 million. He was a Boa Vista, like I say, in 21-22 season, where he scored 13 times in 30 appearances, then scored 24 in 40, 11 and 24, and then 14 goals in 25 appearances last season. And we activated his minimum release clause, £5 million, and he's a quality player. 16 finishing, 13 composure. That's 16 balance and strength. Six foot three as well. He's going to do some damage for us this season. And already he scored three goals in two substitute appearances. And then brought in Anton Kurovstiuk. Another guy's name that I can't pronounce. He brought him in for Porto Menze for £1.2 million. He actually played 30 times in the Portuguese Premier League last season. Decent player. Another squad depth option. Heading 15, marking 16, tackling 17. Technically, he's not the best. Apart from those defensive attributes that I want. Strength for 9 now. Potential for him to get muscled off the ball. But he's another guy that probably isn't going to be a starter. And a decent squad option. That can play at left back or in the centre of defence. Which is predominantly where I'm going to play him. He's also got plenty of international pedigree. 55 caps for Azerbaijan. But a decent deal for us at 1.2 million then obviously with my backup goalkeeper going i brought in another greek international 31 year old stefanos capino so he joins us from park salonica there you go so yeah we've got him in he went to them on a free transfer to last season where he played 16 times 12 conceded but i'm happy to bring him in for 400k considering we got over a million pound for our substitute goalkeeper doing this i'm happy to get capino in for a cup price deal then we brought in Felipe Cruz. He joins us for 3.4 million from Benfica. He played 13 times last season. A younger player, a 23 year old, who can play out at right back. And he's a very all rounded player. Happy to get him in. Currently valued at 4.6 million pounds. And 23 year old, his time is on his side. And then finally, the biggest transfer, I think, of this entire save is Kenneth Taylor. He joins us for 17.5 million from Ajax. Only played five times last season, but a quality player, and he's currently valued at 36 million pounds. Current ability three star, potential ability four star. Can play basically all across the midfield. In the centre of midfield is where he's going to be, but he can also play in the defensive mid as well. He's got a continental reputation. One of the only players I reckon he's got continental reputation for us. But again, you know, he's valued at 36 million pounds. That's a good deal when we spend 17.5 on him. So team selection wise, we're still going to play this same way. We're going to play that 4-3-3. We're going to be Kohler in goal, Hamachi, Stafalidis, Mavropanos and Vignali at the back with Corbelis, Taylor and Malambi in the midfield. That's probably not the way we're going to go. We'd end up with Coetzee in there, I reckon. Now we've got Milico, Chatsagavanis and then Musa up front. We're going to go with the balance mentality again as it leaves us more defensively stable and we're playing that tick attacker. Squad dynamics wise, then team cohesion is good. Club atmosphere and Magia support is very good. Top influencers wise, anybody opposes. Now I've got 13 players of supporters. 18 players have no real opinion of us. When we look at the competitions wise, then obviously we're in the Super League, we're in the Champions League, we're within a group with Manchester City, Villarreal, Rangers and ourselves. We need a third place finish. We need to get in to the Europa League and let's do some damage in there. And we've got the Greek Cup as well. When we have a look at the Greek Super League then, looking at the season preview and expectation, even though we've won the league four times on the bounce, we're still expected a second place finish. We have got plenty of players now in the Media Dream 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players out of the 11 are coming from Panathinaikos. So we are starting to dominate the chores out of the Media Dream 11. However, it doesn't show it in the prediction for the season. 
So finally then, looking at the schedule, what a pre-season. We've not lost a game in the pre-season. We start off with games against Lamia, Tripolis, Ophi, AEK and Olympiacos. That's our first five league games. We've got Villarreal and Rangers in there as well. But yes, one last season to do something in Europe. So fingers crossed we managed to get out the group or get a third place finish ideally and drop into the Europa League and give it a good go. Right then guys, so for five seasons on the bounce, we have won the league, you can see there, we have finished 14 points clear of AK with 72 points on the board, Olympiacos down in fourth place. They've had an absolute calamity. When we look at the championship group, you can see there, you know, that is the top six as it was. But what about the league? So looking at the league table then, we actually topped the league as well. We won our last five games. Looks like AAK fell off a bit there. But let's have a look at the past positions and see how we go on. As it looks like it was plain sailing for us. I was going to say, we had a bit of a shocking start to the season that happened last time out and all. But match day 12, we went up into top spot. And then, again, looking at this championship group, we've got to be sat in top slot you were. AK in there as well. And Olympiacos having a bit of a shocker, dropping down a place on the last game of the season. So competitions-wise then, we win the league. We also win the Greek Cup. We do it again. We win on a penalty shootout against Olympiacos. We deserve that though. 23 shots, 7 on target, 54% possession. Chata Gavanis with a goal on 45. Bruno Costa on 66. The other man sent off on 103. But yeah, we don't miss a penalty. Kaunaki and Rakina both missing penalties for Olympiacos. We deservedly win that. It's just a shame it's on penalties. But getting knocked out in the group stage again is not ideal. That is a group that we should have at least been getting a third place from. Manchester City and Rangers going through. We draw on points with Villarreal for a piece. But goal difference has ruined us. We scored six but conceded 16. One of our finances then, how am I leaving the club? So in the overall balance, we've got £58 million. Transfer budget-wise, £34 million, nearly £35 million. 100% of transfer revenue is being made available. Wage budget's now up to 612 k Debt and loans-wise, no net debt, and we're still going to receive £7 million in unreceived transfer funds. Squad dynamics-wise then, Team Cohesion and Manager Spot are both very good. Club atmosphere is excellent. Got a couple of players that want to leave. Corbellis is one of those, 32 year old now, he's not going anywhere. A top influencers wise, I've got 20 players to support us. Perit is the only player that doesn't, he's got no real opinion, he's leaving us anyway I think now, 31 year old, he's joining. Sibenik, where are they from? So he's going back to Croatia. So player stats wise then, Miliko scored 41 goals this season. He scored 22 in the league, 13 in the Champions League and 6 in the Greek Cup. Let's just have a look and see how he got on in the league. He's a top goal scorer as well. Kalnaki with 20 goals. Musa in there with 17 as well. And that's just in the league. How did Musa get on? So Musa got 17 in the league. 26 in all competitions. So he done all right as well. Hamachi had the highest average rate with a 7.62. Jatsa Gavanis got 22 assists. That was the highest assist for the season. Mavropanos got 97% best pass completion. Most player of the match awards was Chat Gavanis with 10. I wish he'd stop getting it because his name is an absolute mouthful. It's crippled me all the way through this. Most yellow cards, Mavropanos with 11. And most red cards was Arestis with 2. And then when we look at the team stats, the team stats wise has got 93 goals, which is the best. We conceded 23, which is also the best. So deserved it this time around again. Yellow cards wise, 58, which is the seventh best. Three red cards, which is the fifth worst, and we had the fourth highest average attendance. Let's have a look then. Top goal scorer was obviously Milikano with 41, Musa with 26, Jas Gavanis with 24. Also, he got 22 assists. Malambi got 14 goals, Ruan, my centre back, with 10, and my other centre back, Mavropanos, with 10. So there's 22 goals between my two centre backs. Highest value player is now Kenneth Taylor. He's seen a bit of a dip in his value. He ended up playing 42 times, so I'm happy to say that. But he's not developed as much as I would like, considering obviously he's our record fee at 17.5 million. So looking at the milestones then, it's basically been domestic doubles all the way through, hasn't it? So I was hired in 2021. At the end of my first season, we'd won the Greek Cup and the Super League. The season after, we'd done exactly the same, and I was then entered into the Greece Hall of Fame. The season after, we'd done it. The season after that, we'd done it. The season after that, we'd done it. So five seasons on the bounce. We dominated both domestic competitions, and deservedly so. You know, Olympiacos, there was a couple of seasons where they were close, but it was hit and miss all the way through. So overview-wise then, I brought in 29 players for a total of £65 million. I sold a total of 61 for £88 million. The highest fee spent was £17.5 million on Kenneth Taylor, as we've just seen. And that was the start of this season. Same as Joel Perot, who we sold for £22.5 million, and he went away. And overall, I spent 1,717 days on holiday, so 97% there. Again, 
again, this is a quality rebuild. Yes, we've done absolutely nothing in Europe. We really didn't. We were so poor. I think we got, obviously, to that Europa Conference League final against West Ham. And I think that was in the first season. We, like, peaked far too early there. But the rest of it, Olympiacos just haven't been able to match us. And that's the main thing. The aim of this rebuild was to restore some dominance and to knock Olympiacos off the perch. And we have done that. So there you go then, guys. Like I said, if you watched the video all the way to the end and you haven't already, please like and subscribe would mean a lot. Also, if you want to leave a comment about the next team that I should rebuild, do that and all, because, you know, I'm almost 20 rebuilds in now and I'd like to hear your ideas. So, yes, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and I'll catch you later. Ta-ra!